them as his own, mm -hmm. to only ever come and declare them innocent of the accusation. When you begin to see that's the heart of God, even while I'm dead in my sin, listen, that does something in your heart about your view of him. Yes, and you. Right, and then real quick after that, it does something in your heart about your view of yourself because you see his view of you. Right. That begins changing everything. Mm -hmm. Because if you see how he's going to be good to you, even when you're in sin and death, you begin to trust him with your life. Right. Right? Yeah. If you begin to see him for who he really is, you begin to find his integrity born in your heart. You begin to find the truth about his character born in your heart. Mm -hmm. And now you're not just trying to use your willpower to trust him, but you find your heart is just laying into his hands because you see the beauty of who he is. Right. That changes everything. Man. Absolutely. And, and, and this is the power that was in Jesus' heart. Jesus never sat in the place where he said, well, this death I'm dying at the cross is because the Father is punishing me. Mm -mm. He never said that. He never said, well, this death I'm dying at the cross is because God has forsaken me. <laughs> because God is angry. Because God can't look upon me because I'm naked and I'm clothed in this body of death. He never found himself thinking that. Had he thought that, there would have been no resting on the cross. Right. right. And I asked people, that, you know, I was debating with the guy, I don't want to say debating, but talking with a guy the other day, trying to help him walk through this, and we were talking about forsaken, um, and, you know, the two differences between Jesus saying, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then a few verses later, him saying, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Mm -hmm. So what, what belief possesses the power to cause Jesus to commit his life into the hands of God. That he was forsaken or that God would never suffer his Holy One to see corruption. Yeah, mm -hmm. the latter. Right, and, and see, we don't read the Psalms from, from this foundation, but if you go read Psalm 16, which is David talking by inspiration of the Spirit of the Son, you know what he says? You will not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Exactly. Now, that's Jesus. So, what would cause a person to commit their hands into the life of God as they're dying with the sin and death of the world on them? The belief that you will not suffer your Holy One to see corruption. Right. You have not abhorred Him in His affliction. Right. You have not hid your face from Him, but you will hear Him when He cries unto you. That's the belief that would cause a person to say, ah. Father, into your hands I commit my life. Yes. And, and what, we don't, what we don't understand is that Jesus had to destroy the lie. The lie was that man believed they were forsaken by God. And so Jesus had to enter into our darkness and confront the lie so that the lie could be swallowed up with the truth. And so when he says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Man, he's not just pointing to Psalm 22, but he's pointing to the overall view of the Adam man. Yes. Which is that they found themselves clothed with death. Right. And because they find themselves clothed in death, they conclude that means they're the smitten and stricken of God. Mm -hmm. That means we're the forsaken of God. That's the Adam's conclusion. And so Jesus had to enter into our darkness, which is the place where we thought he was forsaken, so that we could see that he wasn't. Right. And then the glorious light of the gospel could shine, and the name of God could be exalted and glorified for what it really is, mm -hmm. instead of for what we thought it was. Right. Yeah. Right? Yes. Absolutely. 